Hello everyone, this is Craig Chamberlain with the PCM Tech Help Show at PCMTechHelp.com. And in today's video, we're going to be looking over the Microsoft Security Essentials Antivirus or Anti-Malware Suite, however you want to call it. And we're going to look at some of the more intricate details of the software. Now first we're going to take a look at the software package and I'm going to show you a third party analysis of the tech detection rates, the removal rates, and the performance. Because as you know, I'm only one guy. I cannot run an entire test of all the antivirus software packages. Uh, it would be a full-time job, and there are companies that do it, and they do it a lot better than I do. So we'll look into that after this. So let's go ahead and get started. Now in this video, uh, again, in all the video reviews that I do, I do have the software available at my website. That's at pcmtechhelp.com slash downloads. Uh, I have over 80 free Windows downloads I've collected over my years in IT. And in this particular case, if you go down to antivirus tools, it will be under the Microsoft Security Essentials. Uh, you will see in a second why I removed PC Michiana Recommended from Microsoft Security Essentials uh, coming up here soon. Now let's go ahead and open up the software and take a look at it. And what we have here is the Microsoft Security Essentials layout. <clears throat> One of the best things about this software actually is the fact that it's very user friendly. It's very easy to read. It's very clean. It's very simple to use. And it's very lightweight. Really, it is. Um, as you can see, the default scheduled time is uh, Sunday around 2 a.m., but you can just click Change My Scan Schedule. And at this point, you can actually choose when you want it to do your scan. You can do a full scan, you know, whatever day of the week you'd like to do it and what time. And you can have it check for the latest definitions at that time and start a scheduled uh, scan only when the PC is on but not in use, so when it's in idle, in other words. You can also limit the CPU usage during a scan, which is kind of nice if you want to run a scan in the background while you're using some other software package. Let me go back to home here, and as you can see, we've got real-time protection, which will actually, uh, while you're using your system, it'll scan files and it'll uh, capture them and uh, do a quick scan on them uh, as you open and close them and as you're uh, going through certain things. Now, this does not include your web mail, so if you're actually reading your email through an internet web page, this cannot do that, and I mean, it'll scan if you try to download something, uh, but it's not actually going to detect your inside of your emails, whether there are uh, vir viruses and things like that. And then, of course, you have virus and spyware definitions are up to date. If they're not up to date up here at the top, you can click update, and then very simple, very clean, very straightforward, it'll automatically update it. Up here at the top, you have history, and you have uh, your quarantine items, your allowed items, so if it found a false positive, you can allow items and all detected items, so uh, items that were detected historically in your machine and what it did to them, as you can see, uh, alert level, date, and action taken. Uh, if you click on settings here, we also have uh, default actions where you can have it do when certain things happen, uh, recommended action, or you can have it automatically remove or quarantine. Uh, recommended action means it's going to prompt you, and then you get to pick whether or not you want it to actually follow through with that. Uh, personally, I like to always do recommended. That way I can I can interface with what it's trying to do. And then I'm made aware of the situation. On the left-hand side, you can do real-time protection. Uh, you always want this on. If, uh, if for any reason you're having some kind of conflicts with other software, you'll want to disable this. Uh, you can exclude files and locations, file types, and certain processes if there's certain applications you're running that it thinks are bad that aren't. Uh, and then in advanced settings, you can go in here and have it uh, scan removable devices, which isn't enabled by default for some reason. Uh, you can have it create a system restore point before running a scan. Uh, you can allow all users to view the history reports and uh, automatically remove quarantine files. And then maps is kind of like their participate in our virus detection community. And uh, if you participate in this, it'll gather basic information or if you do the advanced membership, more advanced system information so that it can help improve your experience. I'm a little paranoid about that kind of stuff. I don't even want to participate. If you're if you're feeling generous, if you trust the vendor, and you want to help out, then basic membership is the way to go. Of course, that's pretty much all there is to it. If you go back to home, running a scan is very simple. On the right-hand side here, you have full, uh, custom, or quick scan. I always recommend the first scan you run as a full, and if you're going to have it run a scheduled scan, you should always run a full scan on a scheduled scan, uh, because usually you're going to schedule something while you're not at your computer. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual detection rates. Now, I know people are kind of uh, defensive when it comes to their antiviruses, and so I'm trying to remove myself from this as much as possible. Uh, AV Comparatives is a great third party for, it's one of the biggest names in uh, reviewing antivirus software. I can't tell you definitely that this is exactly where it's going to be uh, today because viruses are constantly fluctuating and changes, but we have to take some point of reference. Now, uh, 
as you know, viruses and malware and all that, it's constantly evolving thing. What antivirus was great this year might not be great last year. What was great last year might not be great this year. I mean, it's one of those things that's constantly evolving. Just keep your thumb on the pulse. Uh, stick with a reliable product and you're usually in pretty good shape. So this is by no means saying that if you don't have this antivirus, go out and buy a different one because you're dumb. You know, it's just one of those things where it's always a constantly changing thing. So I can't tell you that after you watch this video, everything's the same. So anyways, with that disclaimer out of the way, this is the performance test. What we're looking at here is how well it performs without interrupting other things in your uh, computer. I think this is one of the most important aspects of an antivirus. Because what is the point of an antivirus? To keep viruses from getting on your computer, which can either steal your information or reduce the performance of your machine. So if that antivirus reduces the performance of your machine greatly, what's the point? Other than, obviously, to protect your information. Now, as you can see in this one, Microsoft fell into the higher category here. It actually fell into the three out of three stars in the uh, Advanced Plus for performance tests. Pretty much what I expected because I do like the performance of Microsoft and it does not interfere in the background. So then, as far as performance tests are concerned, Microsoft did a great job. Now, when we look at the on-demand detection tests, we run into a little bit of a problem. Now, this test part in particular, actually, uh, it has to detect it when the virus first drops into the machine and it also has to detect it when you do a raw detection. So if you go out and just do a basic scan, it should be able to find a majority of viruses. Unfortunately, Microsoft fell into the category of standard, which is actually two stars below the three out of three star rating. Pretty unacceptable as far as I'm concerned. This is very recent. This is March of 2012. So that actually caused me to pull the PC Michigan recommended off of this particular antivirus. And lastly, we have the actual ability to remove the viruses it detects. Those are two completely different things. And in this case, it fell two out of two stars, which is about average. And then, of course, you can actually look. A lot of them uh, are notorious for not being able to do complete malware removal. Kind of surprising. But hey, if you can detect it and it can't necessarily remove it, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a really bad thing. So that's all there is to this video. That's a complete review of the Microsoft Security Essential Suite. It is still a good piece of software. I'd probably move away from it now, though, because it's in the free category, and there are other better options in the free category. Uh, and actually, I think Avira Antiver is one of the top ones right now in the free. Um, Avis is still doing a good job performance-wise. It's on the, on the lower end. So thanks for stopping by. As always, leave comments and ratings and thumb this video up if you liked it. And also you can follow me on uh, Twitter. That's at Craig Chamberlain. You can also follow me on Facebook. Uh, we also have a Facebook fan page you can go to. And uh, stay tuned. Oh, if you have questions, swing by the community forum. You can sign up there and post questions. And I'm there pretty regularly. So thanks again. And I hope you guys see for the next video.